Hi, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Richmond the movie, which tells the story of Richmond's 200 years of history. I believe it's the only uh, full documentary made about the history of a community in the city of Ottawa, so it's sort of special. I was the producer, the researcher, and the narrator, and uh, I was uh, helped in the project by Sandy DeRoche of Navigator Communications, who handled the videography and the editing, and also did the, uh, all the technical aspects uh, that only he can do. The first viewing was in November 2018, and there was over 600 people there. And the demand was so great after that, that we put out a DVD as well. I must commend uh, the, the community of Richmond, everybody, organizations like the firefighters, the churches, the Masonic Lodge, the Orange Lodge, any of the uh, people we wanted to interview, people like uh, Bruce Kincaid and Dr. Ken Harton and uh, Al Eaton, who has two uh, Guinness World Book of Records and uh, the players of the Silver Stick hockey team uh, of 1973 that won the championship. Also Pam and Doug Champagne, who we spent a whole day with us going to various venues around the village, singing their Richmond 200th anniversary song so we could incorporate it in the movie. So everybody cooperated so much and that's I think one of the reasons why the movie uh, turned out as well as it did. Um, there's a couple of uh, interesting things happened in the journey of making this film. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, well a couple of them, but one of them involves uh, the Canadian War Museum. We arranged to uh, go to the Canadian War Museum to shoot a, film, uh, shoot a segment about Sefton Stewart, who was a young man from Richmond who uh, fought in the First World War. We wanted to use the World War I trench at the Canadian War Museum. So, which wasn't easy to arrange, that it, there was a lot of sort of red tape. They asked me, when do you want to come in to look at the site to, to see uh, how it's going to fit in? And I said, well, let's go next Wednesday. Not, I didn't pay any attention to the date or anything. Anyways, when I got up that morning, the day we were going in, there was on the news, there was that the Canadian War Museum was opening a special exhibit that very day about the Battle of Amiens. It was a very eerie uh, uh, coincidence. Sefton Stewart fought in the, in the Battle of Amiens. And in fact, he not only fought in the Battle of Amiens, but unfortunately, he was, that is where he died. We were going in there on the, on the same day that that battle started a uh, hundred years before. And so it was a little eerie, to say the least. Another coincidental thing about that, related to that, we, we, we needed a World War I uniform uh, to use uh, when we were shooting in the, in the World War I trench there. Well, I remembered that Eric Booth of Richmond uh, is involved with uh, uh, vintage uh, military vehicles. So I phoned him and asked him, do you have a, know anybody who has a World War I uniform? And lo and behold, Eric responded, well, I have one. Now, what is even more coincidental is that the World War I uniform that he had, the Black Watch Regiment, was the same regiment that Sefton Stewart was involved with. So it was really a, another, quite a coincidence that, uh, that we came across a World War I uniform just like the one that Sefton Stewart would have worn. Another sort of, uh, sort of funny thing that happened, I think anyways, was uh, when we were shooting a scene involving the uh, Duke of Richmond in uh, Memorial Park in, in downtown Richmond. And he was, could be bitten by the fox and show some blood. Unfortunately, in our planning, we didn't think of bringing any replica blood or whatever. So I ran across to the subway and got a couple packages of uh, ketchup. And then we, so we used the ketchup as the blood on uh, the Duke of Richmond's finger. So in the movie, watch for that. And that isn't real blood, it's the ketchup from uh, the subway across the, uh, across the road. That was another thing. And then, of course, uh, we, had a, we have a scene in the movie about the 1938 bank robbery, big bank robbery in Richmond. And uh, 
we did it in cooperation with uh, grade 10 students from Sacred Heart High School who, who acted the various parts. But you'll notice in the getaway scene, as the robbers run out, they get in a car, but unfortunately it's not a vintage car. It's, uh, I tried to get a vintage car, but we shot that scene in April and everybody with an appropriate vintage car still had their vehicle in storage for the winter and had not brought it out for the summer yet. So they were unavailable to us. So what we used was a PT Cruiser, which sort of, uh, I know is a modern car, but it sort of has a 1930s look. So we used that for the getaway vehicle. So you'll notice the getaway gangsters uh, running out and getting in a PT Cruiser. Uh, and also, when you, when you notice that uh, scene, uh, the driver, um, since there were grade 10 students, none of them could drive. So uh, it gave me the opportunity to make a cameo appearance, acting appearance, and I was the driver of the PT Cruiser uh, as the only, only one among them who, who had a driver's license. So um, I was the getaway driver for that uh, scene. So that's another thing to notice. So anyways, those are some of the things that happen behind the scenes. I hope you uh, enjoy watching the movie, uh, maybe learning a little bit about the history of Richmond, but more importantly, just having uh, a couple hours of enjoyment and entertainment. So happy viewing.